وتعالى وأشكر أشهد ولا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القرآن العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اعملوا فسيرى الله عملكم ورسوله والمؤمنون صدق الله العظيم All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He Allah who has created us All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who has taught us that which we knew not. We glorify him and we thank him for all his blessings and favors and bounties upon us. I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah. He is alone and he has no partner. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the servant and final messenger. Ibadullah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Al-Quran, I'malu, work, perform good deeds, be engaged community needs you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will recognize your engagement your good deeds Allah will recognize whatever you have put forth And his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam too will recognize and the believers will be applauding you and the believers will recognize you for what you have done. And so today, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, I want to remind you and myself that we, we, we need to instill within us, within others, the love for doing good. The love for doing good with regards to ourselves, our families, and more so our institutions. You know, children grow up in this society today, they enjoy all that others have done for them. They are being given a good education and in Islamic environment, they are not only given a good education with regards to their academics, but they are being molded and trained to be good individual in terms of their, their Islamic uh, education what we find is that sometimes the older ones do not have the love and appreciation for what has been done for them. 
And so it is passed on to the younger ones. And the younger ones sometimes are being just given those opportunities and the love for the places where they were given the opportunities, the love for the community doesn't exist with them. And you may wonder why, and I want you to listen carefully because you may wonder why uh, he is talking about this. Look around in our communities, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. Alhamdulillah for the communities that uh, uh, are, are progressing, communities that have a good transition, communities in which young people are, it's instilled within them the love for their institutions. Alhamdulillah for that. But in most of our communities, we find that uh, we, we, we hardly have the, the right replacement for those who are advanced in age, those who are looking for retirement, for example. We, we find that, uh, and this is okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the, the earth is wide, so you can go wherever you wish to go. And uh, so long as you continue to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so long as you continue to stay connected with your creator, it doesn't matter which part of this globe, you know, this world that you end up in. But as people migrate and the people move from one place to another, because of many reasons, we find a void in our communities. And so instead of progressing, we are regressing. And all the millions that we have spent into developing communities, we fear that one day these places might be exchanged for something else. You know, I want to remind you of history. Many, many years ago, In certain parts of the world, and I think it's in Australia, there were Muslim, there, there were there were Christians who bought their churches, and they were very vibrant in their communities. But the method of transition was not there. Their young ones it just disappeared and did not have the love for the institutions that they had established and so those places were sold and converted into mosque or masajid islamic centers as we look at ourselves as a community of muslims if we are not careful, we may end up in a situation similar to that. When we, we ask Allah's forgiveness and pray that that does not happen to us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, 
work. Allah will recognize your work. Everything in this world, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, requires sacrifice. In, in, in that very short surah in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us about sacrifice. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Inna a'atoyna kal kawthar. Fasalli li rabbika wanhar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that uh, not only Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given in abundance, but all of us, whenever we look at the person who does not have as much as we do, we understand how much we have been given or how much we have been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna atoyna kal kawthar, look at yourselves. Let us look at ourselves. Look at the man who does not have as much as we do and we will understand how much Allah has blessed us. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fasalli li rabbika wa nahar. And so glorify your Lord. Give thanks to Him morning and evening. Give thanks to Him every moment of your lives for the blessings that He has bestowed upon you. And show gratitude by making sacrifices given the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What Allah has blessed you with, share it with others. And it's not only money. It's not about money, my dear uh, brothers and my dear sisters. Allah has blessed us in so many different ways. So show it. Give it. Give some of it back to community. A and that's the love that we ought to develop for our communities, for our institutions, for our masajid, our schools, our hospitals, our Islamic centers. Whatever it is, we, we need to have that love and attachment to these places. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ Let there arise out of you a group of people who will invite towards that which is good and they will enjoin right and forbid evil each one of us need to strive to be part of that group it's not someone else's responsibility it's a responsibility on each and every one of us let there arise out of you a group. Why is it that we always have to look for others to do it? We have potentials. We have the ability, we have the skills. We have the resources. Why is it that we always have to look at others to be that group and not us? Why don't we want to be included in that group? And so, when Allah reminds us in the Qur'an that let there, there arise out of you a group, strive to be a part of that group. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, and whoever hopes to meet with his Lord, Let him be engaged in the doing of good. Let him always look for opportunities to be doing good things. Allah says in the Quran, وَتَعَوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى And cooperate with one another 
in everything that leads towards piety and righteousness. Unfortunately, in the world that we exist today, people do the opposite. وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ And do not cooperate in that which leads towards sin and enmity. Most times we find people gravitating towards that. It just takes a little, a little something. And the seeds of dissension are sown Enmity is being created and people are engaged in sin. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, always look for opportunities to be engaging in that which is good, in that which leads towards piety and righteousness. My dear Brothers and my dear sisters, if we don't take this seriously, we will continue to leave the existence of these places on the shoulders of just a few. And when they become tired and exhausted, we will continue to see us going downgrade. And so take this seriously. You have, you as adults, always express the love and appreciation for these places that we have been established for your benefit, for our benefit. Encourage your young ones to be in love with these places. You know, you may have an experience that you don't like. You may come to the masjid or to the school or to the Islamic center and someone may have said something that disappointed you. You may not like a teacher in the madras or in the school. You may have something that bothers you. But it should affect the institution in terms of where you have developed a hatred for these places that so many millions have been spent into in order for your benefit in order for our benefit. So today, if you don't take anything away from what I said, just take this away. Instill within yourself and your families the love for doing good, the love for our institutions that have been established for our benefit. This is the only way we will progress as a community. This is the only way we will continue to make future generations 
proud of what we have left behind for them. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, it's not all about the salah and the zakah and the saum and the hajj. It's not all about our personal development. It's more so the development of community, being part of that group that continues to do good and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Alaykum bil jama'a. It is required of you to be attached to the jama'a, to the group. As we ponder upon what is being said, think about it. I said, may Allah reward those who make the effort. May Allah reward those who have instilled within their children the love for institutions such as these. But think about it as you leave here today. What did I do in terms of making sure that I show how much I love my masjid or my school or my Islamic center? What have I done to encourage my children to be part of it? To have the same love for it. Oh, a container is going to a different country in a different part of the world. Those people will take care of it. The masjid needs money to repay its loan. Oh, those people will take care of it. Be part of that group that will always be doing good, that will always be, be there to show, you know, make sure that there is progress, that we have something to look back to and feel proud of it. This was the methodology of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Planning for years to come, planning for the future. And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, again, and work together, cooperate with everyone who is engaged in the doing of good, in piety, in righteousness, and encourage others to do likewise. It is not only benefiting yourself, but, but ensuring that whatever has been established will continue and others will benefit. Isn't that what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in terms of us reaping rewards even after we have departed this world? He said, إِذَا مَاتَ إِبْنُ آدَمْ إِنْ قَطَعَ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ 
sadaqatin jariyah aw ilmin yuntafa'u bihi aw waladin salihin yad'u lahu whenever one of us depart from this world what benefits us all our deeds are cut off what is it that benefits us after that sadaqa jariyah a perpetual charity and it's not only in the sense of giving money to build that place but a charity that you have you know spent your time your effort your energy behind in making sure that it is it's a continuous charity you will get reward until the day of judgment ilmun yuntafa'u bihi knowledge that you have gained you have benefited from knowledge and that you use it for the benefit of others the cycle continues and you will receive reward until the day of judgment waladin salihin yad'u lahu make your children pious children instill within them the love for deen the love for islam the love for prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the love for their creator instill within them the attachment to the houses of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so on that day that they can be shaded by the shade of Allah when there will be no shade except Allah's shade Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that there are seven categories of people who will be shaded on that day shabu nash'a fi ibadatillah a young person who has been brought up in the worship of Allah rajulun qalbuhu mu'allaqun bil masajid a man whose heart is attached to the houses of Allah these places institution a man whose heart is attached to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a person whose heart is attached the love for it There are many of us who grew up in different parts of the world and we spent most of our time in the masajid. And so we always wanted to see progress. We always look for opportunities or look for avenues to do more so that there will be more people coming to the masajid. That there will be more people who will want to be there. Yes, indeed, we have busy lives. And we have to take care of our needs and our family needs. But Allah knows what we can do and what we cannot do. And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, make sure that you have children who are pious. Part of their piety is that they want to love these places so that they can lift their hands and they can pray for you. You will receive rewards until the day of judgment. Those are the three categories that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand our responsibilities and may Allah guide us to carry out our responsibilities. Remember our responsibilities is not only towards ourselves but our responsibilities is also towards 
our community, where our institutions are part of the community. May Allah guide us, may Allah protect us, and may Allah keep us safe and healthy. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر من منات من كل ذنب فاستغفرون إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين. والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رضوان الله عليهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد my dear brothers and my dear sisters our children they have better opportunities than some of us had. The people who have built many of the institutions here in America, in our communities and in different parts of the world, and are maintaining them, they did not have higher education, for example. They did not have uh, prestigious jobs. Many were working in factories and you know, places where they were just making minimum wages. We have in our communities today young ones who have acquired higher education. Every day at the time of uh, graduation in June, we hear about this one having bachelor's and this one having master's and this one you know, enrolled in PhD or has a PhD. And that's the type of resources that we have in our communities. And as we talk to our young ones, they, they are entrepreneurs, they, they have prestigious jobs, they are not making barely minimum, they are making six figures. And so our communities should not be suffering. Our communities should not be, you know, in the predicament that it is today, that if we don't, you know, do something really seriously, or, or, or places can be taken away from us, that we're not able to pay, or repay our loans, or to repay what uh, we have borrowed from people. We have invested a lot, parents, you have invested a lot into young ones, your children. The community has invested in you. And so it is required of you to give back. And just remember this word, give back. As Muslims, we always look for opportunities to give back. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire us and help us to always want to give back. There are some communities where it's not just giving back. They tell you that if you are a member of this community, a percentage of your wage comes back to us. Yes, we have something like that in Islam, where your money that you have, that you are required to pay zakat, and yes, it is wonderful when you make those six figures or you make a lot of money. 
If it's instilled within you the love for deen, then you will know you have to give back. That you have to give zakah two and a half percent. You have to show your gratitude to those who are less fortunate. You have to show how much you can help to develop communities. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and have mercy upon us. I pray that you take this not as uh, an insult, but you take it seriously because when we look around, we see more and more the job of running these places it is being left on the shoulders of a few and when a few migrate or they move out the, the pool dwindles and it becomes very difficult on those who have been placed in that authority remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Al-Quran and I close with this Ha antum ha ulai tudauna le tunfiku fi sabilillah. Allah says, You are being now asked to give back in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of us will find all sorts of excuses, some of us will withhold. Others will come forth and they will do what is required of them. Remember, Allah says, if you withhold, Allah will find other people to replace you. And they will not be like you. We, we don't want replacement. We want us to be the ones who will do it for our communities, for our institutions, for our families, for our neighbors. And so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be part of this group that will continue to do good and to make sure that we progress and not regress. لَقَدْ أَمَرْنَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْعَظِيمِ حَيْثُ قَالْ إِنَّ اللَّهُ مَلَائِكَتُهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيلِ يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وأرضى الله من خلفائه الأربعة أبي بكر وأمر وثمان وعليم ونستة الباقين والبشرين بالجنة ونسائر الصحابة ونتابعين ومن تبعهم بالسان لا يوم الدين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان وثبت قلوبنا على دين الإسلام ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم لا تدع لنا في مقامنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا هاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا قديتها ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي إذكم لا لكم تذكرون فاشكروا الله على نعمه واذكروه على آلائه ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسنون أقم الصلاة Thank <laughs> you.